So if true, we're going to want the frame to grow from the initial to the final frame on the x-axis. So that's going to be that step first. So that's going to be assigned to let x scale factor. So we're going to write, so that's going to be another ternary operator. So if presenting is true, we're going to return. So that's going to be, if it's true, we're going to return the first statement, which is going to be initial frame. And that's going to be width divided by final frame width. So basically, if it's true, we want to return a frame of the size of the bounds of the screen minus the size, so the original size of the initial frame, of course, because it's going to be like minus the cell, so the size of the cell. So that we have to take into account. And that's going to be the first statement if true and false. So we're going to have this column, which is going to be the equivalent of else. We're going to write final frame width divided by initial frame. So instead, we would have the initial frame if it's not true. So I forgot just the width right here. OK, we're going to be doing the same for the Y factor, Y scale factor below. So that's going to be if presenting is true, we're going to want to return initial frame height divided by final frame height. So that's going to be if it's true. Otherwise, we're going to return final frame height divided by final frame, sorry, initial frame height. And below I have this other constant. So that's going to be our reference to the transformation. So whichever is returned, so whichever is true or false, we're going to return. So for now, I just left it as 0, 0. But basically, we want as a parameter, so the scale, so x scale factor for the width and the y scale factor. And we're going to be using that in the transformation. So below, we're going to have this function right here. So that's going to be if presenting. We're going to want to assign so the transform so attributes to this photo view. So the photo view, which is going to become so the one that we're going to bring, that's going to be brought to the front. So that's going to be scale transform. And we have already seen so that's how we add to the container view and how we bring to the front. What we want to do next is to animate the transformation right here. And so inside the animate with duration, we're going to find so the duration, which is equivalent to 80 milliseconds, like so. We're going to have no delay. We're going to use an options in order to allow the animations to slow down near the end of the animations process by using this option, curve is out. And finally, we're going to have the animations closure where we're going to have the action. So for the photo view, we're going to use the transform. So that's going to be this transform property that we're going to update. So first, we're going to have another ternary operator. So that's going to be if self-presenting is true, we're going to use so the original transform identity, which is going to be the original frame. Otherwise, we're going to use scale transform that we have defined at the top. And that's going to be the transformation. So as we're going to allow so the frame to scale up. So that's going to be the final frame. Also, we're going to change the center, so the origin of the photo view. So that's going to be, we're going to do that with a function, which is going to be CG point, which is going to take an X and Y coordinate. And that's going to be the equivalent of the final frame, which is going to be growing from the center and then occupy so the entire screen, the entire bounds of the screen. We're also going to have a completion, very important, because then once the animation is complete, is finished, we want to also dismiss the animation. And this is what we do with this parameter right here. So this is self dismiss completion. And we have defined this one right here, dismiss completion. And you can use this property, so this function, so that's that's a property that includes a closure in order to run some code. So once the animation is complete, in that instance, we're just going to leave it blank. But just so you know, it works just like a completion, just like the example of animate with duration. Dismiss completion is going to allow you to run some code once the animation, so the transition is complete. And with that, we're going to call also complete transition, which is going to be set to true. That takes one parameter, which is a bool, in order to complete the transition. That's it for the animator class. So we've seen all the functions, the properties that we're going to use in order to perform the custom animated transition. 
we're going to go to the collection view controller where you're going to see that we have an instance of the animator class right here. And we're going to use this one so in an extension, so all the way to the bottom, we have this extensions to the view controller. And we conform here to the UI view controller transitions delegate. And then we use the required method that our animations controller for presented controller and also animations controller for dismiss controller. And inside of each functions we use so that instance of animator. And by applying that, so we allow this view controller, which is the collection view controller, to rely on the instance of the animator class in order to perform the custom animated transitions every time we tap on a cell. So what happens if we were to try now to use our app, we're going to first, so we're going to first select a category, let's take food, then one cell, but it's not working just yet. And why? It's because also we need to add interactions to the cell. So we're going to add one function and that's going to be add tab gesture recognizer in order to allow, so an action, in order to add actions to the cell and then trigger the custom animated transition that's going to be next.